Today on Art Scene will feature the Mayor's Awards for Excellence in Arts and Culture, a trailer for a new film, Meow Wolf Origin Story, a new exhibit from Denver Museum of Nature and Science, Leonardo da Vinci, 500 Years of Genius, and Denver Public Arts 30th Anniversary. Hey, I'm Bobby Lefebvre and welcome to Art Scene, where we continue to showcase the great art in Denver. First up, it's the Mayor's Awards for Excellence in Arts and Culture. This is a great opportunity for us to acknowledge and honor those who contribute to the artistic and cultural landscape of one of the greatest cities on earth. The Mayor's Awards for Excellence in Arts and Culture is to honor people within the arts in Denver or cultural institutions that are doing excellent work throughout the year. In the spirit of Imagine 2020, the Mayor of Denver annually recognizes a number of individual and organizations that contribute to the arts, culture, and creativity of our city. You know, arts are throughout my family, and I can't go anywhere in my house without being confronted by the arts, whether it's arts on our wall, or my wife who is performing, uh, preparing for a performance in the city of Denver, my son's in performing arts as well. So, you know what, it's, it's who we are, and I recognize that arts and culture are the only universal language that we can really only depend on, no matter where we go in the world, we can take arts and culture, whether it's performing arts or visual arts, everybody understands that. And it's a great opportunity to bring us together, it's a great opportunity to bridge the gaps, and it's a tremendous opportunity for all of us here in Denver. So we have five awards for the Mayor's Awards. We have a Youth Award. That award is given to either a person under 18 or an organization that's serving kids 18 years and under that are doing great work for those kids in the arts. For 27 years, I've been working with adolescents predominantly, although we go from 12 to 24 years old. And in that 27 years, I've learned a lot about young people and a lot about the spiritual process of listening and connection and grace. And young people have taught me that their vulnerability and their willingness to listen and our willingness to hear them and hold a safe space changes their lives. I want to be me with curly natural hair, unique brown skin, beautiful brown eyes, and most of all, have a voice. We have the Innovation Award. That award is looking for someone that's doing something that's new and innovative and creative that might be different than anything else that's happening in the city around arts and culture. Dorothy had asked me to read this in her absence. This year has been very gratifying, beginning with the Lumonics Mind Spa installation in the community center on the first floor. Working with Shanna Shelby and her fabulous Denver Arts and Venues team will always stay close to my heart. I truly appreciate this award and in innovation. New projects have been cultivated as an outgrowth of our exhibit here at the McNichols Civic Center building. You know, I kind of like it when people come up and say, oh gee, I love this. It, uh, it makes me feel a little more worthwhile. We have the Global Award. That award is designed to highlight and honor people that are really making a name for Denver, either nationally or internationally. When it went out there, I have never seen folks react in this way, right? It was so amazing. And then to think that these young people were all in high school, right? And were one of the most popular shows in the entire French, the biggest theater festival in the entire world. It was shocking, but at the same time, I felt like a proud father, literally because my child was also there. Uh, but these young people, these young people really have impacted my life and I try to impact them every single day. I try to teach them the power of theater and how we can use our story to change the world. But this proves it, right? That we actually are being recognized for that work. Scotland was one of the best parts of my life this far. I know that I will forever be grateful for this journey. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. It truly is a blessing and I know that I speak for all of us when I say that we are changed for the better. We 
We have the Imagine 2020 Award. That award is honoring an organization or a person that is moving our cultural plan forward and looking at the seven vision elements of Imagine 2020 and really bringing that to the forefront and helping to enhance our cultural plan. We did a collaborative piece between Fancy Shawl Dancing, which is contemporary powwow um, social dances that we felt represented women and the two different, you know, two different art forms, and we created something beautiful out of it. I just wanted to make sure that I was representing young Native children here in the Denver Indian community and give them something to look forward to, give them something exciting to watch and be like, hey, that's what I dance. Those are the kind of songs I dance to. I want children of diversity that when they come to a ballet, they see people who look like them. I also want to thank our dancers. Whatever skepticism they had was gone in the first five minutes when Kay explained her process and what she wanted from them and what she was going to give them and what she wanted from them. She wanted to learn about their art form too. Final award is the Impact Award, and that is honoring and highlighting someone who has been doing arts and culture in Denver for 10 years or more. That's really making an impact on the long-lasting cultural scene of Denver. It solidifies the fact that people appreciate what we have been doing uh, for all these years in promoting flamenco and Spanish culture. The arts are extremely important uh, because the arts are a reflection of people's soul and also a happiness and strategies that, are, that happen to people. And in the future, people remember the artists, they remember the sculptors and the painters. We have another award to bestow. For the second year running, the mayor has extended a challenge to each of our city council districts. Each district has 2020, 2020, to create a community engagement program in the spirit of the Imagine 2020 cultural plan. So we are excited to announce the winner of this year's Imagine 2020 district challenge is at-large councilwoman Robin Knich. Councilwoman Kniech's project was inspired by the deaths of three homeless Denver residents, Christopher Zamudio, Nicole Boston, and Jerome Coronado. A mural was painted near the underpass at I-25 and Broadway, titled Healing Through Art, Cowboy, Rome, and Nikki. Sometimes you get this feeling that what your community needs is healing, and what it needs is art. And it, and it needs those things because we won't find the answers and we won't find the solutions if we don't have the spirit of survival and the spirit of connection to keep us going. And that's what this project created. We are a great city because of the great arts and we're a thriving city because of our thriving arts and culture scene. So it's a pretty powerful moment for us to stop, pause long enough to honor those who are making a great contribution to our art and culture scene here in uh, the city of Denver. Congratulations to all. We'll have more of the winners on future editions of our show. Coming up in March, a cool new exhibit on Leonardo da Vinci at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science.
awesome stuff. Much more art scene on the other side, including a trailer for the Meow Wolf origin story and Denver's public art program. All right, and we are back on art scene. Let's take a look at some of Denver's public art. Someone once said, if you want to understand the soul of the city, you've got to look at the art. This is a new piece of public art that we just dedicated this evening in the River North Arts District, and it's called Blueprint. It's part of the Brighton streetscaping project that just got completed. So it's, the, we think, the jewel on the crown of this new effort. There's actually four pieces along Brighton Boulevard. It's kind of architectural in form and intended to replicate the Rocky Mountains. So that's sort of the geometric scale of the piece. The blue flowers are actually the blue columbine, which is the state flower. So it's a nice integration of talking about the state's signature natural landscape, but kind of put in a more urban form, which is, I think, pretty interesting. This community really lets us know what people are feeling, how the culture here in this community really is, and I am so excited to be here. But I want to really thank our mayor, Federico Pena, who in the 80s set aside 1% for all capital improvement projects. So this project on Brighton Boulevard, $25 million, 1% of that, $250,000 of art will be on this street, and it's incredible. So this blueprint is now the blueprint for the rest of the city of what's gonna be all over this city every time we do an art project, our tax dollars going to good work. How completely everything in wild nature fits into us, as if truly part and parent of us. The sun shines not on us, but in us. The rivers flow not past, but through us. Thrilling, tingling, vibrating every fiber and cell of our bodies, making them sing and glide. It started from conversations with the landscape architect, with William Wink and Associates, who were responsible for the design of the park. And we did a walkthrough of the park um, in its former state. And he was really interested in leading people down to the river. And uh, I was thinking about, you know, what is a way to sort of get people to walk down or progress down? The, the river really is part of us, and I thought that was really such a perfect sentiment for this idea. It was, it was really fun to be installing this part of the work while the park was open because we got so much commentary and feedback from the people who are using the park every day. Um, there were a lot of people in the neighborhood who come and have their morning walk every day, or walk their dogs, or come and have a cup of coffee, and they loved seeing the progress on the work, and they'd come and sort of check in with us, and people had a lot of questions. There were people who you could tell were people who worked with their hands and really appreciated all of the handwork that went into this. And then there were other people who sort of couldn't believe that people actually make things with their hands. <laughs> like here we were in public making something with our hands because all of these are set by hand because um, there's, there's no other way to do it. I loved doing it. It's a, it's a super collaborative process. So there was a lot of conversations with the landscape architect and really, this work is very different from work that I've done before because it really was about collaborating with the place and the other, the other designers who were you know, part of making this space. Every bird song, wind song, and tremendous storm song of the rocks in the heart of the mountains is our song, our very own, and sings our love. All right, so we are here with Michael Chavez, who is the manager of public art here for the city of Denver. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks for having me. Michael, our public art program is, is one of the best in the country. Tell us a little bit about it. How did it come to be? Well, it was established in 1988, and the idea was to integrate art into daily life and to all these new construction projects that the city was undertaking at the time. Uh, around then, it was Denver International Airport, pretty large construction project. What it does is it sets aside 1% of any construction budget over a million dollars for the inclusion of public art in that construction. 
So, Michael, what is the importance of having a structured public art program like the one in our city? It's an incredible investment on behalf of the city for its residents and tourists alike. One of the bedrocks of a great society is art and culture. And what it shows is that Denver's really invested in its art and creative community. And Michael, recently your agency sponsored a photo contest for the community. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we recently celebrated our 30th anniversary. So we started off launching a new website. We wanted to figure out ways that people can interact with the collection. And so we have this new website, denverpublicart.org. And you can search the entire collection. You can do it by your phone. You don't have to download anything, which is great. And we encourage people to use social media and hashtag Denver Public Art 30 mm -hmm. and take photos of public art all over the city. And then we chose 30 of those to display in the lobby of the Buell Theater. You know, anywhere you go in the city, it seems that there's, there's art everywhere. So how many pieces exactly are there in this collection? We have more than 400 right now, which is pretty amazing. And that includes everything out at Denver International Airport. We have artworks at Red Rocks, all the way south to Yale. Denver County is quite large, so it's the entire county of Denver. You know, the city's continuing to grow and arts and culture is, is following suit there. Where do you see our city in regard to arts and culture in the next 10 to 20 years? Well, we're definitely on par with the, the great cities in America. We've definitely launched ourselves into that. I travel all over the country, and our program is one of the most venerable in the country. I think just being a, a destination where people can experience art throughout their daily life, just woven in through the entire fabric of the city. Well, hey, thank you so much for chatting with us. We appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Meow Wolf is coming to town. Here's a preview of a new film about their origins. Doesn't look like much right now. As you walk down the hallway, you'll turn the corner. Eventually, you'll open up the refrigerator, and you'll wind up in another world. How would you describe Meow Wolf, and how do you fit into the art scene? Meow Wolf is a venue for artists who felt like they were on the outside of the art market in Santa Fe looking in. The scene for artists who are trying to do something different or weird just didn't really exist. We were Santa Fe's orphans of neglect. The gallery arts world is a bunch of markety bull It's time for us to just be an agitator. The art world needs to get shaken up a little bit. We didn't want rules. We didn't want hierarchy. <laughs> we had no money. We started like pulling stuff out of dumpsters. I was zip tying trash together and fixing it to the wall. What kind of people is this gonna draw? All the types of weirdos. All the good and bad weirdos. For us, it was just this creative explosion. Are we creating something that people are actually gonna like? Not a single person got paid. We did this for years. There are 10 of us living in one tiny little room because all the money's going to the art. There's not even much money for that. I mean, it was insane. It was too much. How long can I do this for? How can we make Meow Wolf sustainable? We need a building. We need like millions of dollars. Where are we going to get that? The idea of the person that could buy this for us being George Martin was really silly. It was like, please take a chance on us. Nobody else is going to. OK, I'll, I'll buy the bowling alley. It's incredible. Other dimensions, other times, a secret story. He was just pushing all my buttons was just like burning down some old system and having like a hyper phoenix of what art can be rising out of the ashes. Not only is this crazy, but it's possible. We have to support those who feel like they're on the outside looking in, because that's how we were. That's where this is a success or a failure. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time as we discover more of Denver's art scene.